Bum, ba, da, dum. Welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I am Banjo Ben, your host here on the site that teaches you how to play all kinds of stuff, but we're all about the banjo today. If you're following along in my beginner banjo learning track, you've been introduced to chord shapes up the neck. And for a beginner banjo player, that can be a bit daunting because these are a lot of frets. And we've had all this talk about chord positions and chord changes in songs, and you wonder, what are you gonna do with it? I wanna make that easy for you. And one of my favorite things to do is to take concepts and information that we need to learn and retain and combine that with fun exercises that you actually just love to play and make them useful. And that's what we're doing today. We're going to learn those up the neck chord shapes, all those different ones. So for G, for C, and we're going to work that into a solo for Blackberry Blossom, which can also be an intimidating song for banjo players because it's very melodic, it's a fiddle tune, and a lot of people shy away from it. You shouldn't do that. So we're gonna knock out a lot of birds with one stone. I love doing that. We're gonna learn up the neck chord shapes. We're going to have a fun exercise that's going to work on our right and left hands. And we're also gonna have a solo to play for Blackberry Blossom. If you're watching on the website, as a Banjo Ben Clark Gold Pick member, you have everything you need here on this page. Just scroll down for the rest of the content, including the rhythm tracks that you can practice with me along with, and the tabs to download. If you're watching somewhere else, I'd love to have you on the site, of course. BanjoBenClark.com, Gold Pick members have hundreds of lessons that you can take, including this beginner banjo learning track. Let's get started. Let's just do a tad bit of review before we jump into learning this solo and getting into this exercise. But we've learned so far three different chord shapes and that's the only major chord shapes on the banjo. That's why it's kind of easy because there's a pattern to it. Um, and if we start with G, which the banjo's tuned to open G, we have what's called a bar chord. And that's just where you play your strings open. And you can move that anywhere, right? So that's G, so we'll pretend like that nut is our finger, but if you wanted to have an A chord, you could just go two half steps above that, have an A chord, B, C, B. But then we also have different ways to get that G chord. Not only do we have a bar chord, we also have these different patterns, which I've nicknamed the X pattern and the Y pattern. So if you come up three frets and you make this pattern, we call it the Y, and that's five, three, four, five. And that's also a G chord, it's just a different inversion, it's just switching the notes around. So you'll hear how similar it sounds. Same chord, just different notes, um, different arrangements. And then if you move up one, two, three, four frets, and then just switch these two fingers around. So boom, now we have nine, eight, seven, nine. We have what I call the X pattern, and that's also a G chord. Okay, so now listen to the similarities. Open or bar, Y, X. And check out what you can do. One, two, three more frets up. It starts over. There's another bar at the 12th fret. Then guess what? It's gonna continue to go. Y, X. And if you have more frets, you could go to another bar. So bar Y, X, bar Y, X. Um, so what's interesting about that is that we can find all kinds of different ways to play these major chords without having to move a whole lot. Because if you're wanting to switch in between G, C, and D chords and use only the bar chords, then you'd be stuck going. But if we integrate the bar, the X, and the Y patterns, we've already learned all this, by the way, this is just review, then you don't have to move very much. You can sit right here with an X pattern. Go to a Y for C, and then move that up two frets for a D, and then you have another G right here, or you can go back here, or go up here for G. So we need to be able to learn all that. We need to have that on recall, and um, it's quite daunting, as I mentioned, just to have to memorize that, and honestly, it's just not very fun. So my job as a teacher is to help you learn something that you don't necessarily want to put the work in memorizing. And um, I have a way of doing that. So we're gonna learn Blackberry Blossom and we're going to run through a bunch of our chord shapes to do that. Let's go ahead and throw up the chord uh, or the tab there for you. And we're gonna start out easy. I'm gonna start with just some pinches, okay? Um, we're just gonna play the first three strings for the first time through the A part. Uh, you may wonder, what's an A part? Well, a lot of fiddle tunes have what's called an A part and then a B part. A lot of times they're eight measures long. You see the first four measures there on the tab sheet. Um, and so the way that the arrangements work is you'll play an A part of a fiddle tune and then oftentimes repeat that, do it again, and then go into the B part. And so that's what we're gonna do. The first time through that A part, we're just gonna play 
chord shapes. And then what we're going to do is integrate a roll because I like to introduce steps. So once we learn the chord shapes, then we'll be able to that will come. Okay, so let's first start with our G chord, and this is a Y position. Okay, this is the same position that we would get down here. Perhaps you know this G chord. Well, if you move up 12 frets, you'll get it again up here. So we don't have to play all four of those strings. For this one, you can use your first, second, or index, middle, and pinky, or you can even use your ring. I encourage you to use your pinky because that's most often what you'll use in this shape. And that's where we'll start. Now we need to go to a D chord for Blackberry Blossom. And one way that we can do that is just move everything down one fret and then switch our first two fingers. Boom, so we have 14, 15, 16. That's not hard. I know that we're way up the neck, but this is not hard. If you can find this position, you can find this one. Now what do we need? We need a C chord. Now we're already on a D chord. And so we've learned already that a C chord is just one whole step beneath a D. So let's move that down two frets. So there's measure two, there's our C chord. So we just kept our fingers the same, moved down. And then here we're going to grab another G chord and we're going to grab this bar shape. This is just 12 frets above this bar shape. So do that with your index finger there. It's pretty easy to do because we already had our index finger on the 12th fret to play that C. So now we have a bit of a shift. I want to change chord shapes. So now we're going to go to our Y chord shape and go to a C. And that C, Y chord shape is going to start with our pinky on the 10th, index on the 8th, middle on the 9th. Okay. And now if we just slide down one fret, we're going to get, and switch our first two fingers, we're going to get the X position of the G. So here's what I want you to, to remember. Way up here, we had a G, and then we went down one fret, switched our first two fingers, and we had a D. <laughs> okay? The same relationship happens here. We have a C position, the same position we had up here, and we go down and we switch to a G. So you might just practice that. G, D, C, G. Now, in Blackberry Blossom, it has an A chord, which is really cool. And I know that we have it written as an A7, um, and that's what a lot of the rhythm guitar players will play. But we're going to play a straight-up A chord. How might we get an A chord? Hmm. Well, we can find any G chord and just move up two frets. So the one that we're going to use here is this Y position, 7, 5, 6. And I want you to see where we got that. Here's our G position that you may be familiar with. And we just moved it up two frets. One, two. Now we want to get our D, and I am going to have you play a D7 just to make you do it. And that's seven, seven, five. So what is that D7? Here's a regular D chord. And we're dropping the root note, that D note. If you don't know that, that's okay. I've just told you. There's the root note. We're dropping that down to a C note. You'll learn more about that later. So you need to get in the habit of being able to shift to those. It's not a whole lot of movement. So let's play through slowly this first line. You'll get it. It's intimidating at first, but this is part of the fun. We're going to go all the way up to this X shape, or actually, actually a Y, sorry. Go down one fret to D, switch your fingers, bring the whole position down two frets, then we're going to bar, then we're going back to a Y position for C here, switching our fingers, going down one fret for G, then we're going to switch our fingers, go down two frets for an A, and then we don't have to move much at all to get our D7. Cool. Now, here's what we're going to do next. We have almost that same exact chord progression in the next four measures. 
except a little bit of a change on the end. We're still going to do G, D, C, G, and then C, G, D, G. Um, but we're going to use different chord shapes this time, or at least a lot of the different ones, just so we can work our way down the neck. So this time when we start on G, we're not gonna start all the way up here, nor are we gonna start right here. We're gonna start back on this G position that we played in measure three. So here's our G, and then to get our D, we're going to bar. I would love for you to compare that to measure two when we had a C and then we barred to a G. So the, the change from C to G is the same type of change when we go G to D. And, and you may not understand the theory for that, but by learning this pattern, you're learning the fingers for that. And that's gonna pay off later. So if that's a D and we need a C, we can just slide everything down one whole step. Now we're going to go back to a G chord measure six. That's just a full octave below here. Now we're going to keep going down into a familiar territory perhaps for a C chord. And then of course a G, open G. And then a D7, two, one, open, back to G. So this whole line. Now what you do need to do now is memorize that pattern. Um, memorize going through those chord positions. It's really not that difficult. And then once you have that, we can integrate the rolls. You wanna do that now? Let's do that now. If you're watching on the website, just scroll down for the next video segment. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, come on over to the website, banjobandclark.com. We're going to learn how to get our right hand working with our left, assuming that you're right-handed, maybe you're left, and then you can just do it in the mirror. All right, see ya.